Hi everyone, welcome to the D-Heart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. I'm coming to you from my craft room in my home <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. I live in the greater Seattle region and absolutely love all of the outdoorsy things in this area. Um, it is still summer vacation. Uh, it is technically the last day of August, so it makes sense to record this episode and share with you what I've made in the month of August and things that didn't quite get finished that will still continue on into future months. Um, but yes, I teach for a living and I'm still on summer break, which is very nice. Um, we actually get out late for summer. We end like the last week in June for the regular school year. And we're starting up uh, middle of September. So I still have a couple more weeks, <laughs> although that's usually time where, you know, it's like, okay, time to go back to work and get back in the swing of things, time to set up my classes and narrow up, down all those details. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're still getting out and enjoying the nice weather, at least when we have it. Lately, the weather's been on the fritz between smoky air where the wind is blowing in smoke from forest fires um, or rain because now there's all this smoke in the air and then it's you know promoting the rain um, or the wind blowing in weather from the tropical storms and things going on it's just it's that time of year right where it's not sunshine and rainbows anymore it's roll the dice and we'll see what's gonna happen today so um, that transition into fall is really fun. Fall is my favorite season, but I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> I want to stay on vacation. I want to, you know, spend time in the garden and spend time with my dog and go on adventures. But I guess I'll just have to do that on the weekend and not during the week. So let's get down to the crafty talk. Um, I'm going to take you through things that I did finish in the month of August. There are some things. Uh, I'm also going to share with you projects that are still in progress. I have quite a few works in progress, so I'm going to limit it to the projects that actually got work this month. So there are projects that I didn't pick up and do anything with this month. So I'm going to leave them out of this episode because there's already enough to talk about. So first off of the needles this month was a pair of socks. Um, these are a shorty pair of socks for myself. And I believe I had one sock finished and the other one was, you know, cast on and partway through. Uh, last time I spoke with y'all and now they're finished so these are knit out of yarn from hobby h-o-b-b-i-i -I. yes I did spell it correctly um, so moonwalk um, Michael Jackson themed here uh, it is 74% wool 24% polyamide and 2% polyester. It does have that glitter in there. And so this is a 100 gram ball and I used a little over half. Um, but on these shorties, I did knit a 20 round cuff, which is not usually what I do. I usually do 15 or 10. But I went a little bit longer this time. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, I knit my socks top down and I do a heel flap and gusset. Uh, my favorite right now, because my favorite changes, <laughs> uh, is to do a garter stitch edge on the heel flap. And it just makes uh, picking up stitches along the edge very easy for me. So I really like it. Um, and it gives that extra room 
in the heel. I love knitting a short row heel, but I feel like with the thickness of my foot in that region, the extra space I get with a gusset is actually much more comfortable. So I like having the gusset. Uh, I did one by one rib all the way around the cuff and then I continued that down the top of the foot. It gives it a nice fitted feel and that's what I like on my socks and then a rounded toe. I have to say I'm not a huge fan of sparkle yarn. This is one reason why. See that? It just looks like Christmas tinsel from when I was a kid. I don't think they really make this and sell this anymore. But do you remember? I'm a child of the late 80s. You know, grew up in the 90s, 2000s as a kid. And I can remember this stringy tinsel all over the house after Christmas. And it just, it's not my favorite. I mean, I like the sparkle. I think its it looks cool, but it gives the yarn some of that wiry texture. So instead of this being soft, it, it gives it a little coarseness, which is okay, but I think in the future, I'm not gonna buy sparkle yarn because it's just, oh God, there's another spot, sorry. Things like that bother me, they just bother me. So if I know they're gonna bother me, I'm not. I'm gonna avoid them, but I do like the sparkle. I have another pair of socks knit out of this same yarn in a different colorway. And I mean, they're comfortable. I don't mind them, um, but yeah. So the, the colorway is, this is color number six, and this is a place where I really love Ravelry. So I keep track of all my projects on Ravelry. And I went to enter this project and while on the label it doesn't say a name, it just says color six. But on Ravelry it said number six was, oh shoot, now I can't remember. It had a name. I don't remember. <laughs> But the, the numbers actually had names, like one of the colorways was Motown. And uh, so it just, anyway, thank you Ravelry. And whoever put that into Ravelry, that was nice. Uh, but this is number six, so it's got that um, yellow and brown in there with the blues. Uh, yeah, so I used 53 grams of yarn, like I said, a little over half, so to get another pair of socks out of this ball, I'm going to need to figure out how to do it in a little less than 50 grams, uh, and that comes out to be roughly 243 yards, so that's a good chunk of yarn knit up out of the stash into something I can wear, which is nice. I got a hankering to make some washcloths. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because other podcasters out there I've been watching are making washcloths, like Julia of the Happy Knitting podcast, who I love to watch. Um, but yeah, I just got bit by the bug and really wanted to make some washcloths which is something I've definitely done over the years. Um, you know, as a teenager up until now, it just every once in a while I really get a hankering to make some washcloths. So I did. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby and of course I made sure to go on a week when all the yarn was 30% off. Um, tip, every other week the yarn is on sale. So if you're at Hobby Lobby and the yarn isn't 30% off, just wait until the next week and go back and buy your stuff. <laughs> um, but I went and found, I love this cotton, and I'll be sharing um, more things I picked up in my Hobby Lobby trip <laughs> uh, later in the episode, but I picked up three colors of this 
And the first one is Bruschetta, number 18. Um, this is what I have left. So this comes in, um, this is 100 grams, is what you get in the ball, which is roughly 180 yards. So I have some left. I was able to make two washcloths out of the ball, and I still have some left. This is 100% cotton, um, which I really like. So the first one I made is, of course, the, you know, my grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern, which is knit um, from corner to corner. And I, you do yarn over increases on the edges, but I um, knit those yarn overs through the back loop and it closes them up so they're not um, eyelet holes in here. And so it's just garter stitch, so just knit back and forth, um, excuse me, increasing till you get to the middle here and then decreasing down. So that was the first one I made. And this gave me, this gave me an idea of how big to make them. I used a washcloth um, that I currently have that's a, a store-bought one and I used that to give me the idea of size. I also had my scale nearby and I was weighing the skein of yarn because I wanted to get more than one dishcloth out of the ball, which I managed to do. So that was the first one I made. And then I thought I'm gonna get bored if I make them all out of the exact same pattern. So I decided on the second one that I would knit it straight, so this is not corner to corner, and I did seed stitch, so it's just knits and purls alternated, and it's got this really nice texture on it. And I did a, a short little um, garter stitch border, so it would be similar to the my grandmother's favorite on the edge. Not that that really matters. Uh, but yeah, so seed stitch. And I got two other colors, so that's bruschetta, and then I also got khaki. And I made one out of khaki, and again, I wanted to switch it up. So instead of seed stitch, I did moss stitch. I love moss stitch. I think this is the stitch that drew me to knitting in the first place. Is I started, I started out as a crocheter as a kid and I just really like how pretty this looks. So it's still just knits and purls, um, but um, it's every other in the row, but then, how do I describe this? <laughs> Instead of alternating in every direction, like the seed stitch, right, all the knits and purls are alternated, you do two rows of knits. So there's two knit stitches stacked here, then two purl, then two knit, and two purl, etc. And then you shift that over on the on the next. So two purls stacked, two knits stacked, etc. You guys know what moss stitch is, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's out of khaki. So I made three and then I wanted to do something else. So I did something else. <laughs> uh, so I have enough to make another washcloth out of khaki. I just have to decide what stitch pattern I want to do and then I'll do that and the third color I got is this beautiful green it's called forest so it'll be khaki forest and bruschetta and I just thought these had really nice autumnal vibes to them and so that's what I went with 
And then, I know, because I was already in the store and glancing around at things, I also bought this. And I've used a bunch of it, so um, it is smaller inside of here, but this is called Stitch Soak Scrub. Uh, it's 100% nylon. It's this, like, chained stuff. Um, and I can recall my grandmothers and my great-grandmother having handmade dishcloths and scrubbies and all the things in the kitchen. And I just thought, you know, I've never tried to make one of these for myself and I just felt like giving it a shot like I don't know maybe it's amazing so so I got some of this and I looked up patterns on the internet for little scrubbies and there are quite a few of them <laughs> I paid nothing for these patterns they were free and very easy to follow so one of the I made one scrubby as a knit pattern because I remember my my great-grandmother I inherited a bunch of her knitting needles and still use them in fact I used one of them to make the scrubby I did um, I remember her having um, washcloths and scrubbies out of this pattern which is the thing I was envisioning when I bought this yarn it's like okay well I have to make this Oh, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. But that scrubby is in the kitchen right now being used. So I did make it. I did complete it. It's in the kitchen. And it functions just fine. But uh, you had to knit. You had to knit it and then fold it up and sew the sides together. And it's not really easy to see the stitches in this yarn. And so I just found it annoying and thought, ah, oh, no, let's try crochet. <laughs> So, um, I also made some out of crochet. So this is just, um, double crochets, three rounds, and it's double layered. So basically you make two of them and then you crochet them together along the edge. And I found that to be so easy. So I think I made three of these, four of these, I don't know. I made a bunch and then thought, okay, well, let's test these out in the kitchen before I make more. So uh, I got my husband recruited and we're testing out the, the knitted versus the crocheted versus the store-bought scrubby sponges. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's squishy. It doesn't like cut me, but it is a good scrubby material for pots and pans in the kitchen so yeah I gave it a try and I'm pretty happy that I did it was easier to work with than I thought it was gonna be so I did finish one other thing in the month of August and that is some spinning so I have some hand spun yarn that I finished um, I have been spinning this fiber on my Turkish drop spindle and the plan was to do it all on my Turkish drop spindle and I saw this coming. I got bored with how slow it was going and just, oh, I want to finish this spin so I could have it but also so I can move on to other spinning projects because I have a lot of fiber and wool and I want to use it. So I set aside fiber so that instead of doing the whole project on the drop spindle, I'm doing half of it on the drop spindle and then the other half of the fiber I spun on my uh, electric spinning wheel. Now this yarn is very different from what I'm making on my drop spindle. For one, the drop spindle I'm doing a three-ply chain ply. Uh, this is a two-ply. So they have different plies. 
uh, but also on the electric spinning wheel I'm spinning the singles I think a little bit thinner as well so this is definitely a thinner yarn than what I'm getting on my drop spindle uh, the other thing that's different is that so this is two different braids from the same dyer on my drop spindle I don't have it sitting here <laughs> I'm spinning the one the one colorway and chain plying it on itself right so each skein is each colorway separately this though I decided to combine the two so one ply is in one colorway and the other ply is in the other colorway combined into a single yarn and I really love it I think it's absolutely beautiful excuse me this yarn it is not presenting itself well but it is scrumptious so um, by the way this is not one big skein this is a bunch of little skeins <laughs> The bobbins that I have are pretty small, so my spinning wheel is my electric spinning wheel. Sorry. I apparently can't talk and wrap up a skein at the same time. My electric spinning wheel is an electric eel wheel nano 2. As the word nano suggests, it is small, which I love. <laughs> I love that it has a small footprint. Um, so the bobbins are small. So they don't hold a lot of fiber, which is totally fine. Um, but I wanted to keep them all together and I didn't want to have to have six different little skeins floating around. So I just bundled it all together and it's super squishy and I love it. So this fiber is 50% baby doll south down wool and 50% alpaca I got uh, this is 115 grams of fiber and in here is 804 yards it is pretty thin I was going for a fingering weight I have not put the yarn on a wraps per inch tool yet I need to do that but I did calculate the grist because all you need for that is how much it weighs and how many yards. And so the grist is 3,170 yards per pound. Which makes this like, I think more of a lace weight. I don't know. Anyway, South Down Wool is supposed to be uh, good for uh, garments. It is soft. When I hold it next to my neck and stuff, it feels uh, very nice. Uh, and also kind of hard wearing. So from what I've read, it would be appropriate to use this for socks. And that is my plan, is I would love to knit a pair of socks for myself out of this yarn. And now that I have showed it to you, I will allow myself to actually wind this up in a ball and cast it on. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to do. We are going on a road trip in a couple of days. Uh, we're going to fit in a camping trip and visit family before school starts back up. And so this will be my, one of the projects that I take with me is to knit on a pair of socks out of hand spun yarn. But I already have another pair of socks on the needles. <laughs> so, um, Summer is ending, fall is going to be starting, and before we know it, Christmas will be here. And I like to knit people gifts for Christmas, so of course I felt the need to cast on another pair of socks. Um, I already have a couple of socks in the gift box, and I need to add more, so, so I have another pair on the needles. So I'm using trusty old Patton's Croy. Uh, in the gray marl colorway. This is the, um, the accent color. So the heel, the toe, and striping up here on the cuff. And the main color is from Hobby. 
I, well, I bought it from Hobby. It's Mayflower One Class. 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. And the color is a number. This is color 31. I haven't checked Ravelry yet to see if there's a name for it, but it's this beautiful, vibrant blue color. So I did finish one sock and uh, I'm doing two by two ribbing. So I only have the one 50 gram ball of this blue. This yarn was on clearance on the website and um, there weren't a lot to get and I was buying other things so I only bought one ball. And <laughs> getting taller socks out of a 50 gram ball of yarn requires pulling in more yarn. So I thought I would do um, obviously heel and toe in a contrast color. So uh, I don't have to use the blue for that, but then I thought it would be fun to play around with stripes on the cuff as well. Uh, so that's what I did. And I just want to show you. So I do this technique, if you switch colors in ribbing, the stripes usually aren't that clean, but to get really nice crisp stripes like that, what you do is when you change colors, you just knit the first round. Then you get that nice clean edging on it. And so on the inside is where all that messiness goes, right? So you would be seeing that pearl bump stuff on the, on the right side if you didn't just knit it across, so. Uh, but I also think it gives it a, a, a really cool look to it. But anyway, there's that. And I also want to show you the picking up the stitches on the garter stitch edge of the heel flap. So by putting in that garter stitch edge, I just want to show you, see how clean that is? Like there's no extra bump there from picking up stitches or anything. It just looks like it's part of the purling. Yeah, it's it's easy and I love it. But I have one sock finished, obviously. I wove in all the ends and I have it on the blocker. And I have the second sock on the needles. I'm past the heel. So, um, yeah, I did, oh, I dropped it. I did weigh the ball of yarn while I was knitting the first sock. I wasn't sure if I was going to do stripes down here. So I thought, oh, if I don't have enough yarn to knit the blue all the way down to the toe, then I'll do more of these the striping here. But I didn't need it, which was very nice. But that was uh, a plan as well. So if you have a yarn that you're trying to get, you know, socks out of, but you really don't have enough, um, some things you can do to really stretch it out is bring in a really nice contrasting color or coordinating color and incorporate things like striping details um, just just to make that yarn stretch further so um, yeah I'm finding it a little annoying that I'm doing projects where I have to have my yarn scale sitting next to me but also at the same time I'm really glad I'm using up yarns that you know I only have this much but I have an idea of what I want to use it for and I want to make it work so it's a little annoying, but I'm making it work. So I just need to um, finish the foot 
and then the toe and then this will be a finished pair of socks to go in the Christmas box. So my next work in progress is a new cast on and it's a new cast on as of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Uh, so I stumbled upon a new podcast on YouTube called Knee Knits and uh, the host there, Amy, is absolutely fantastic. And she put up a video about uh, fall wardrobe. Oh, I had to watch it. Very inspiring. Uh, she went through lots of different kinds of garments and her thoughts and ideas, how she would incorporate them in her wardrobe, and I spotted something. Um, yes, I have been wanting a vest for a while. I was even trying to spin for one and ran out of fiber and that just wasn't happening. So, yeah, but she showed um, a pattern that spoke to me. So, the pattern is, I don't know how to pronounce this, the Scylla Slipover by Petite Knit. I'll put a picture up on the screen. Um, but I really love that it's got a little bit of positive ease. So you're supposed to, the recommendation is to make this with two to four inches of positive ease. Um, it makes me a little nervous to create a garment that's super snug when um, my body weight seems to be fluctuating. And so I really don't want to put a lot of time into making something that may fit this week but not next week. And anyway, it just causes me anxiety to think about that. So <laughs> the fact that this has a little bit of ease but isn't super oversized really um, drew me in. Um, there's simple patterning on it and I just really like it. So I bought the pattern and I cast it on. <laughs> uh, the pattern calls for worsted weight yarn and on my trip to Hobby Lobby, I had already picked up some worsted weight yarn with the thought of making a vest out of it. And oh, oh my gosh, it's like everything came together. I'm speaking way too soon because it's not like I'm done with this garment. But the yarn I got is acrylic and I know I was talking about stashing down my acrylic yarn but y'all I'm sorry but this yarn okay. So it is the Hobby Lobby brand. I love this yarn. It is 100% acrylic right? Yes. But it's this brown and black. It's beautiful. It's, I don't know. It's not um, a brown ply and a black ply kind of thing. It's definitely dyed on the plied yarn. Um, so I just saw it and thought, that's going to have a lovely texture just from the yarn. And so I wanted it. So I bought it. So I bought, I don't know, three or four skeins of it. And I thought, oh yeah, this pattern is going to be fantastic. So I looked through, uh, oftentimes what I do before I purchase a pattern is I will look through the projects that other folks have made to look for you know, loved the pattern, hated the pattern, this part was difficult, this part was easy, and of course photographs. And there were some people who knit this without doing the patterning. So I did knit some swatches and I didn't save them as swatches, I took my measurements and wrote them down and then ripped it out so I could use the yarn. Uh, but of course this yarn is pretty busy and so I chose not to do the patterning and to just do knitting. And one of the reasons is that I didn't get gauge. <laughs> I didn't get gauge, so I'm doing a little bit of modifying. So 
So I should be knitting the extra large, but no, I should, I should be knitting the two, two X based on my bust measurements, but I didn't get gauge. So I'm knitting the extra large. Yes. Um, I think that's right. I don't know. I'll have to look at my phone, but my phone is recording right now. Uh, so I went a, I went a size down to modify for my gauge. Um, I already went down a needle size and I didn't want to go down further because I really like the fabric on this needle size, which is a five pattern calls for a six. Uh, but yeah, it's, I love it. I love it so much. So this is the back. Um, the pattern has you start with the back, but yeah, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So I'm down to the um, shaping around the armhole down here. And I'm definitely going to be <laughs> kind of trying this on as I go because I want to make sure I have enough um, room here. Uh, one thing I wish this pattern had in it were some measurements uh, about the armhole and like the depth of the chest because I actually have pretty meaty arms and I want to make sure that this is I'm going to have enough room and there isn't a schematic in the pattern that tells me um, how much room I'm going to get here. So I just need to knit it out and try it on my body. And if that means I need to rip out some of this work, uh, some of the shaping to, to give me more length before I do more shaping, then so be it. I've just come to terms with that with myself. Like if you knit a bunch and need to rip it back in order to make a garment that will fit you, then you know, you need to do that, Alicia. So, uh, but so far I'm very happy. Um, this pattern is a charted pattern. So if you're looking at purchasing it, um, charts, uh, are going to give you the information about the patterning, which of course I'm not doing. <laughs> uh, but I did, I did knit a sample. I could have put the patterning and you would have been able to see it, but like I said, I'm possibly doing more modifications and if I ignore the patterning and just knit it, that makes my life 10 times easier. So that's what I decided to do. So I had a little bit of retail therapy for myself this month in the yarn department. Yes. Uh, I already told you I went to Hobby Lobby, so maybe I'll go through that stuff first. Uh, but I have a, I have a bag of yarn I've set aside to show you guys. Actually, I'll do the hobby. So hobby, H-O-B-B-I-I, -I, but also Hobby Lobby. <laughs> okay. Well, I frequently go onto Hobby uh, website and look at sales and look at yarns. And most of the time I don't buy anything. But there are some times when I'm like, ooh, actually, you know what? I really want that. So it is not Black Friday. It's August 31st. But they had Black Friday yarn from last Black Friday on sale. And I thought, let's, let's go ahead and let's get it. So they come in packs with two colors. And it's not like you can mix and match. You just have to go with the pack. But I got blues because um, it's my husband's favorite color is blue and I'd really like to make him some more socks and just kind of play around with shades of blue. So um, I'm trying to see if it has, yeah, the colors are just numbers and they both have the same number. <laughs> uh, but this is a, a navy blue and this is a nice sky blue, so. 
Uh, each of these skeins is 100 grams. Pretty sure. Yep, each one is 100 grams, 437 yards. So I should be able to get um, some really nice socks out of these. I also love blue. <laughs> And I bought a crochet pattern a few months ago, this wonderful crochet sweater with um, a bat wing detail on it and just this beautiful texture stitch all over it. And I've been looking for the right yarn for this pattern for months. Um, it calls for a, a DK weight yarn and I, I kind of wish there were more folks who carried DK weight yarn. When I go into the big box stores like Joann's, Michael's, and Hobby Lobby, if you're looking for DK weight yarn, usually that's the baby yarn. And apparently babies only like pastel colors. And I don't like wearing pastel colors. So it's kind of hard to walk into a big box store and walk out with DK weight yarn to make a garment for myself. But Hobby finally put Mega Ball on sale and had a color I wanted. I was originally thinking of a green, but the green was sold out. The beautiful, like, teal-ish, foresty green was sold out. So I went with this beautiful blue, and I think the color is Peacock. This is a color number, but I'm pretty sure on my receipt it said Peacock. So, I got two of these, which should be enough yardage for me to make the sweater. A little over 1,300 yards in one ball. So I have a little over 2,600 yards to work with. Should be enough. And then, okay, here's the rest of my yarn for my vest. So I did get four skeins overall. The colorway is Mahogany Singe. <laughs> mahogany Singe. Interesting. But yes, it's absolutely beautiful. And let's see what else do I have in this bag. Oh yeah, we went to, we actually went to Joann's for something else entirely, but I always go down the clearance aisle because you never know. And for once, there was actually like clearance yarn in there. You know how when you go down the clearance aisle and something is like a dollar off? Like, hey, I used to be 20 and now I'm 19. It's not a clearance. I get annoyed by that. When I see a skein of yarn that's like 50 cents off and they mark it as clearance. Silly. But um, I did spot something that I took home with me from the clearance bin. So this is K&C brand, which stands for knit and crochet. This is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% polyamide in their hand dyed line. But I mean, it's just a solid color. And this color, see this is the wrong tag. This says the color is hot pink. This is definitely not hot pink. <laughs> but it's a beautiful like neon yellowish green. Makes me think of a highlighter. And I thought, yep, that's coming home with me and will probably become socks for me because I really like bright colored socks. So that's mine. And last but not least, I found a new to me yarn. Well, kind of. All right, I love the Lion Brand Mandala yarn with the color block, stripes of color, um, the worsted weight yarn. I've made baby blankets out of it and I just love it. I don't love how expensive it is now, so I don't buy it. But at Hobby Lobby, I found something called Mandala String, which is by Lion Brand, 
but it's their fingering weight version instead of the worsted weight version. And I was like, what are you and why aren't you in my life already? So <laughs> uh, I bought two balls in these two colorways because look at how amazing that is. In fact, the way they had the um, balls on the shelf, I was like every ball that's like sitting right next to each other the whole way down. I was like, it's perfect. The perfect combos all the way across. But I was drawn to these two because of the blues, but also that pop of green and that pop of gold. It just whew, had me. So I had to get this. And like I said, it was the week of yarn being on sale at Hobby Lobby. So I went ahead and splurged. Um, so each of these balls is 100 grams. It is 100% acrylic, so I'm not making socks out of this, uh, and it is 350 yards. So I'm um, pretty excited about this. Uh, my first thought was to just make a beautiful shawl uh, working with these two colorways. So uh, I'm not entirely sure what I will end up making out of them, but I think they're absolutely beautiful. And there's the color sequence there. So this colorway is called Tune, T-U-N-E. And this one is called Country. And there's the color sequence there. So yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, but yeah, so there is mandala in the worsted weight, but there's also mandala string, which is the fingering weight version. I'm excited to use it. <laughs> so that's pretty much all I had to talk about with craftiness. Um, what am I doing? Random things. I'm just doing random things. I'm casting on without abandon. I'm ignoring projects because I just don't feel like working on them. And I'm actually okay with it. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying myself, but uh, I'm right now I'm most excited about the sweater vest. Like I said, I've been wanting a vest in my wardrobe for a while and I'm really excited. Um, people said really good things about this pattern, so I'm even more excited and just hopeful that it's going to work out and be a piece that I love to wear in my wardrobe. Um, so I will definitely keep you updated on that as I make progress. And yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of my summer vacation. In fact, when this episode goes up, uh, Michael and I will already be on the road <laughs> going on our camping trip. So uh, I wouldn't normally record on a Thursday, but I want to get this edited and up so that you guys get to see it on Sunday, but we'll already be on our little road trip. So uh, I'm going to bring just a couple of projects with me. Don't plan on sitting around too much. Uh, we're definitely going to get out and do some hiking and sightseeing and stuff like that. So uh, until I see you guys next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye.